input chat. All right, that pops up. Everything's looking good. Um, cool, cool, cool. All right, so, all right, the show's starting. Uh, what's up, everybody? This is um, S Squad Up. We got a show that we're gonna be posting on the Long Story Short Show YouTube. Um, what we do is we like to talk about comic books. Uh, we have a couple of shows that we have in mind. This one is called Comic World for You. What we do is we bring to you the comics that came out the day before, and we just tell you which ones we like, which ones we think you should pick up, which ones we think are worth mentioning, and which ones we uh, want you to talk to us about. So try that out for a little bit and see if you like it. Um, I'm Corey. This is Jen. And that's CJ. Um, first, we're going to talk about... What do you want to talk about? Oh, I had Captain Marvel number one. It came out by my girl, Tel Kelly Thompson. Oh, my gosh. First of all, amazing. amazing. Of course, we have Captain Marvel, the movie, coming out this year. So, right. of course, people are going to be like, hmm, maybe I'm interested in learn learning more about Captain Marvel. This is exactly. a great book for that. If you don't want to go back and read all of her bookshelf worthy books because that's how long her story has been then you can just talk about this or read this and it just talks about who she was with before Brody she has a love-hate relationship with Tony Stark and mm. she is now like a mentor for this girl named uh, Hazmat she seems to have a thing for military men yeah. I know right Hazmat's cool that's all you need to know but when you are in the military, that's all you know. So that's the right. type of men you're going to go for. Yeah, so definitely. the only thing I didn't like about this was that uh, she has a best friend, and that's Spider-Woman. Yeah. And she was gone for a very long time. She was on a space hiatus. and their, But their dialogue was very dry. Like, as I, like a best friend, me seeing another best friend, like your dialogue should be a lot more like high. It's a lot more like excited that she's back, but it was kind of pretty dry. Um, I'll let it slide because they were fighting a water monster like in between, but you know, but still. <laughs> right. Like make it so, a little more engaging kind of thing. Yeah. Like that, like but other than that, it's a great book. Pick it up if you definitely want to learn more about Captain Marvel and how she operates. Cool. Check it out. Do you have this playing out of your speaker? I have it just playing out of my phone. Oh, I can hear the feedback. Um, uh, let me just try my headphones again. Um, so what they fight? Like what? So in the beginning, it kind of just opens up with her and Spider Woman fighting this like water kraken like monster, and they like throw it back in the water and they defeat it. And then she has like a meeting with Tony Stark because she was gone for a very long time and he had like a polling and basically the people are okay with her leaving, but because she was in space, they don't know what she did. You know, it's right. 2018. They need to know what, why she left, what she did while she was gone. Yeah, why is she relevant? Why she's important? Who the fuck is she? Why am I important? Well, let me tell you in this first volume. Exactly. All right. So, well, I mean, that was pretty... Okay. Well, how was it? How do you like it? I liked it. It's a good, solid number one. Of course, there's going to be a lot of gimmicky stuff in there to, to grab you in there. Like, she saves mm -hmm. a little girl. Like, the Kraken did a usual pick up, grab, and swallow. Didn't even, like, shoot right. or anything. So... Of course, she dove into the monster's mouth and saved the little girl. Oh, okay. But, yeah. I mean, it sounds pretty standard, you know, to issue number one, jump on. I have an issue number one, too, so, you know. Well, well, well Jen, did they display there. all of her powers or just give you a little taste? They give you a little taste of a, a little bit of everything that she could do. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, she okay. could fly, she could do beams. A, a sample taste of everything. Nice. All right. Well, shit. I mean, while we're talking about number ones, I had a number one, too. I have mm -hmm. Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider-Man by Tom Taylor. This is the guy that wrote uh, All New X or All New Wolverine with uh, Laura. This is the guy that wrote X Men Red. This guy's awesome. So it starts Ooh. off pretty. It starts off pretty slow actually. Like uh, Spider-Man just uh, saves some people from falling off a bridge. Uh, he goes back to his apartment complex. He helps out an old lady. Uh, the old lady says, "Can you help the girl next door?" 
Um, Girl Next Door is involved with some shit that's a little deeper. Uh, of course. It starts off slow, but it just picks up. It's like, okay, like, the way he, like, jokes and stuff, you're like, oh, this is just Honey Badger talking. But it kind of, mm-hmm. it weaves its way in, and it's fucking, it ends like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, as the last page, like, how the fuck we get here? But okay. it's, it's cool. It's, like, some shit that I haven't, um, he's really good at showing you, like, the same stuff, but in a way that you've never seen it before. Uh, fresh perspective. Yeah, it's, like, it's pretty good. I'd be really excited. Like, uh, um... It was either going to be this one or the Miles Morales issue number two. And I really like Miles Morales and I really like Saladin Ahmed, but yeah. Peter Parker's Peter Parker. So, mm-hmm. word. True. So it's cool. It's uh, seeing how. He, oh, Aunt May's got cancer again. God, so Aunt May's dying again. <sighs> that's, that's the backup story. So I don't mind spoiling that. But I don't want to spoil yeah. the normal story. Uh, but uh, he does have like this hot neighbor. So that's cool. And, New girl uh, next yeah, door. He's got some dirty laundry he's got to fix. Okay. Yeah. Why is old man May always getting sick? They just need something to happen to throw his life into turmoil. Well, you got like the movies and stuff, like you got the movies and stuff coming out now, so everybody's getting back on board. So it's like, yeah, we can make Aunt May die again now that everybody knows like his villains are back. He's back in the apartment. Him and Mary Jane are back. Well, what happens to Peter next? His aunt well, starts to die. Well, um, speaking of with that man, it's it's surprising they don't make her younger. Uh, who's if this the is a number villain one villain in this one. Um, it actually, we don't know who the villain is yet. It's a mystery. Like, the way okay. it ends is fucking crazy. Hmm. It's like some shit I've never even seen before. That's how fresh it is. Um, it's, I'll talk a little bit more about it. Um, basically, like, the lady that he's helping upstairs, like, she's like, here's an apple or whatever, something like that. But uh, she just wanted him to get Spider-Man to help the neighbor. The hmm. neighbor's like, well, do you have any better heroes? I don't think Spider-Man can help me. Uh, <laughs> Peter leaves and comes back, and she's already fucked. Like, she's gone, like, he, like, goes into her apartment, gets knocked out in one punch, and then, like, Jeez. he gets back, and he's like, oh, yeah, I can't even relax, because I got my roommate, and it's that dude, like, fucking playing Call of Duty in his underwear and shit like that, so it's, like, it's cool, I like it a lot, but I don't want to talk too much about it. I don't know, they, they got that underwear drawn wrong though yeah, it was a little weird but i mean it's, it's funny it's it's cool and okay, at the end yeah. it, at the end like it's like peter's like oh he sees somebody that he hasn't seen in a long time he's like uh apple well not somebody that he hasn't seen but he sees the last page reveal and he's like apple so it's like circle it's secular it's fucking mm-hmm. it's, funny. it's good it's nice. nice i like it um cool. but yeah that was a uh, peter not peter parker that was friendly neighborhood spider-man number one so hmm. that was cool. All right, All right. what do first? Well, since you guys are already doing Marvel, I'll just stick with that. So Punisher, I think it's like number five, and it's a really good story. Six. It Like, well, rather, I like how they, they kept it going and shit. It pretty much opens with like, a, I think it's like Begalia is the country that they're in That's or some shit like work. that. I think he made that up, but he uses that in everything he does. Yeah, and it's uh, Baron Zemo who's running it, but uh, apparently he's running it into the ground. Like, they don't have shit. Like, uh, he tried to put some taxes on, like, the farmers and shit, so now they don't even have eggs because the farmers were, like, fucked this dude. So, like, the country's going to shit. And he has meetings, diplomatic things with people from other countries and shit are coming over. And um, something that, like, kind of made me laugh was, like, he was trying to set up this like fancy ass egg breakfast for them for them to come and the dude's like two hours early because he's trying to get out of the shithole and the only thing he has is cold cereal and toast and the guy's like really That's just... we're, we're supposed to put our faith in you how you're supposed to work you, you just got cereal and toast you're supposed to be running the country <laughs> he's like he's like got a meeting he's like all right and here's our continental breakfast it's like <laughs> It's like, that's exactly what it is because the, the dude comes to like Zemo's palace like, and it's like the one that comes in the bag fucking like, just coffee with those little like cups of fucking like, creamer you're like uh, mm. he don't even um, the dude doesn't even eat he's just like yeah whatever <laughs> um but like after that part um he kind of like he kind of like has been setting up Punisher the whole time with a chameleon Chameleon has like the Punisher's outfit, so he's been killing people around and like pr- pretty much setting up like Frank. Um, Frank's captured by Zemo and he's like being held hostage and all this shit tied up and can't really tell how long he's been there, but he's being tortured and shit. But this dude has like stupid iron will and strong resolve and shit, so that's pretty cool. Like nothing this dude is saying is getting to him. He's, he's throwing like fury under the bus. He's saying he ain't shit. He ain't gonna save nothing. Like all this shit, just talking a whole bunch of shit. 
and Frank is just stoic. And the guy, and Zemo's getting mad because there's no reaction and shit. So then he takes a knife and starts cutting him up and carves into his chest his skull from his uniform and shit. So it was like bleeding the whole skull and everything coming down. Then he stabs him in his thigh and then it says, hey, knock him out and clean him up and stop the bleeding. We don't want him to die just yet. I was like, oh, that's... <laughs> what the heck? That's pretty Whoa. savage. All right. Why would you... Um, Why would you... Oh, okay. So, like, they throw him back into, like, this prison or whatever and he's there for, like, almost 100 days and some shit and he's, like on the floor with all the other inmates and Hydra is like the security and like it's a Hydra prison. So Hy- one of the Hydra members come up to him and is like, hey you, you killed my brother. Who was that? You did this, you, 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 you cut him up, you cut his throat and then you burned him alive. You're gonna have to be more specific. And he's like, my, my mother couldn't even go to the funeral and have an open wake because you desecrated the body so much. Still not ringing a bell. And then the guy's getting mad at him. He's like, oh, man. Zemo says, I can't touch you. But I just, oh, man. Pick up that fork. Pick up that fork so I can beat you the fuck. Ooh, you're going to wish. So then Frank just takes his head, smashes it into the fucking, like, plate and into the table. And then grabs his eyes and pierces them and shit. And starts gouging his eyes and do screaming bloody murder. Other, like, guards are coming over. And they got one of these electric batons. They start hitting them with him in the back. But this dude, like, um, he dodges one. All right. Another dude. Hey, but wow. what were like the highlights of the issue? That pretty much that he could take a baton electric to the chest, like nothing, grab it and throw it away like a badass, and then he just kind of like knock him out. But Wait, that was that's pretty much issue? it. Well, yeah, it was like a quick little thing. Um, it's setting up something where there's like a sister who's gonna help him, a nun or some shit, but they don't oh, really. I thought you meant like leave. a sister. Nah, a sister like a nun. So, like, it just setting it up for the next issue, but it seems pretty cool. Like, uh, I like how they, like, set up Zemo and how his country's, like, all shit. I like how they, you know, like, Frank, and I like that he's still a badass who could take, like, so, electric shocks like nothing. So, so I know uh, when this guy wrote the Winter Soldier Hawkeye story, they went to that place. I know when... Uh, he was still writing uh, Punisher, and he had that War Machine armor on. He went to that place, so I guess that's just a, you know, I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> I guess he's yeah. talking about America problems. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what's Begali? going on right now. Begali, yeah, yeah, Begali or some shit like that. Wow. <laughs> that's funny, though. I like how I like how uh, those these Punisher books are, because it's all shadow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was it's a lot of that. On blood. That's cool. Yeah. I like the scar that, like, I can't wait to see what the scar, like, looks like when it's done bleeding and everything. They didn't really show it, but that would be cool. Scar's over. Yeah. It has to scar over. You know what I mean? Yeah, he, he, he dude, he dug <laughs> into it. He's the whole skull with <laughs> his shit on his chest and shit on the torso. So. Yeah, that has to scar over. There's no way that's going to just go clean, like, and just, so like, what? <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, he's done. Like, you don't even have to wear the shirt no more. He could just walk out shirtless and still have the same insignia. So. Alright, well, that was Punisher number six. Uh, what was your next book? Uncanny X-Men number nine. Um, the penultimate. If you are new, do not Ooh, jump nice. into this book. But I will tell you, start at number one because this saga series has been amazing. Amazing. So pretty much the highlights of this book is that they try to trap X-Man in Legion's mind because, you know, why wouldn't you? Legion already has multiple personalities. What's one more? You know what? What is one more? That's pretty solid. (laughs) That's sound logic. Like, he already has voices. What's one more voice? That's a... We'll just put him in there and then have him deal with it. Exactly. But, uh, you know, I think, personally, it's going to take some time for him to take over another Omega level, like mutant. Mm-hmm. So right now they think that they failed. Yep, so, Turbo, we talking Nate Gray. We talking <laughs> yeah, Nate Gray, Nate X-Man, Gray. X-Man is X-Man. <laughs> inside of Legion's mind. Yeah, Turbo's Legion? watching. Yeah. Yeah. What up, <laughs> Turbo? Uncanny is- X-Men, 10 part weekly series. Catch up. Check oh, wait, ask my man what his uh, Twitch is so we can plug him real quick. Oh, Turbo? Yeah, look up at Turbo Sterles. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you say? At, uh, just like, 
X Man Nate. Yeah, we talking X Man Nate Gray, yo. Yes. At T U R B O S T E R L S. But all right. So pretty Save much, let me waited, do a little plug for you, a little catch up for you, Turbo. X Man taking over the world. He got four apocalypse people working for him: Magneto, mm. Red Omega, the Blob, and he did have a uh, Angel, but he just turned into Archangel. So now he only got three. And now he's trapped in Legion's mind, but he took over Legion's mind. And so now he's taking over Legion's mind and body, and he's fighting the X-Men. Okay, really quick. All right, let me get a real a real shout out. All right, let me get a real plug going. So we are the Long Story Short Show on YouTube. You can find us playing games here at S-Squad Up. Um, we will be showing a lot of people's gameplay. We'll be showing my gameplay. We have Lil Phil Arika. We have Fall Prey to G-O-D. And we also have Turbo Sturls. He is in the chat right now. If you want to go check out him, he is uh, playing some Super Smash Brothers. But we like to play some Naruto and Monster Hunter here and talk about comics every couple of times a week. And then you can find all of our comic talk on YouTube at Long Story Short show all right so back to nate gray yeah so he's fighting the x-men the x-men are fighting back and he's like ha 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 all i need is jamie aka multiple man and i don't need anybody else and so he tries really to don't. make jamie make multiple versions of himself but surprise it's not prime so you can't oh. do multiples of a clone because what happened is Jamie was like, yo, I know y'all don't got a plan, so I'm dipping out of here and I'm going back to the bar. And that's exactly where he went, back to the bar to hang <laughs> out and just drink some drinks because he knows that X-Man needs him for whatever plan it is. He doesn't care what the plan is. As long as he's not there, the plan don't go down. So, okay, boom. He's like, as long as I'm out, they can't do nothing. Okay, then what? Boom. So then, more fighting happens. The good guys start losing. Oh, Chris, you know how the What's blob up? came back from the apocalyptic world? Yeah. Went back to being a loser. Oh, of course. <laughs> like, Tell me forges in it. Yes, Turbo <laughs> forges in it. He's on the cover of the first issue that I'm posting in the <laughs> he chat said, right now. He said, please, please let me know forges in it. Okay. Uh, look this up. Uncanny X-Men number one by Kelly Thompson, Ed Brisson, and Matthew Rosenberg. It's a 10-week, 10-part uh, series that's mm -hmm, just getting mm -hmm. everything in line. We mm -hmm. have the past X-Men here, and we have all these young X-Men that nobody like knows about. So we're getting rid of the past X-Men, and we're getting mm -hmm. everything back to basics so that if somebody wants to read it, they're not confused. We got all your favorites. We got all your Apocalypses, your Forges, your Icemans, your, your Summerses, your Greys. We got everything in here. So everybody. I would definitely check it out, yo. So since the good, the good guys are losing, Jean Grey telepathically calls for help. But, you know, it's going to take some time for them to come. More cool fighting happens. For example, Word. Armor makes this really cool ball. And then she has the glob and rock slide in there with her. And then what she does, she just rolls it towards all the bad guys and gets all the bad guys in the ball. Hmm. So cool. And uh, basically, uh, Victor, a null stole the like vaccine for the x gene and gave it to the government and so Whoa. that's why now the government has a vaccine to take out the mutants again damn well, yeah that makes sense. so that's what the whole thing that beast was going on we we're like what's with this boring thing going on with beast that <laughs> <laughs> So, like, did he get money Beast for it or it up again power? For everybody. So Beast was, like, yelling at him, like, why'd you do it? Why'd you do it? And he, like, told him, and basically someone disguised himself as, like, a younger kid and did this whole sob story, and that's why he did it. And, and uh, Beast was basically like, you wanted freedom, but basically what you did, you just shackled us all to the government. That's what you did. Yeah. So we'll see how they wrap this up in number 10 because this is like the next to the last one. It is getting crazy. Like I said, go back to number one, read it all the way through because you're, mm -hmm. you're going to want to know what What the fuck? This. Okay. Crazy. Damn. Crazy. Okay. That is pretty dope. I'm talking to Turbo right now. So basically Kelly Thompson is in charge of like a lot of the older X-Men kind of thing like that. 
uh, Ed Brisson is the one who's going to be doing a lot of the X Force related stuff, and then you have Matthew Rosenberg who's going to be in charge of like the team that uh, Wolverine and Cyclops are heading. So that's going to be really cool. And then if you just want Wolverine, you have a really cool Charles Soule Wolverine book that should be coming out, I believe. So that's really dope. I think they're doing a lot of cool stuff with mm -hmm. both Spider-Man and X-Men. Um, they got a Fantastic Four book that's coming out that they're about to start bringing in Doctor Doom. So that can only be good things. So the Marvel <laughs> Universe it is, is looking good. Great. You know what, Chris? Why don't you bring us out a little refresher into DC World to tell us that next book that you read? Uh, okay. So I had Batman Kings of Fear, and this is the final. This is the conclusion and shit. And um, what I liked to it is like Scarecrow. Uh, what I liked about it was Scarecrow really got the Batman. Like he, he really fucked him up to the point where he's questioning everything. Like, what is my reason for the mission? What is my, why am I doing this? Is it even worthwhile? Uh, all these villains I lock up in Arkham keep breaking out. I'm keep repeating the same cycle. Is it even working type of shit? So he's questioning everything. So Scarecrow really like got a number on him with all this like interrogation of fear gas. Um, he injects himself with adrenaline. So that kind of like dissipates somehow, I guess. I don't know. But um, as he's like finishing up like a, uh, let's say capturing or coercing Scarecrow to like surrender and shit. Like Gordon busts through the door. He's like, hands up, freeze. Oh, never mind. So Batman's already like taking care of it. And Gordon just busts through the door like he was about to do something, but it's already done. So it was like, huh, so what's going on? And Batman kind of tells him like, yo, uh, I think he kind of got to me. And Gordon is like, fuck that shit, you're Batman. You know, I wouldn't be where I am without you. I would be dead or worse. I'd be a bad cop or some shit just goes on. And as he's like going off with this little speech, he said, now, ultimately, I just wanted. Well, who am I kidding? You already left and did your disappearing gag. I just wanted to say thank you. And Batman's gone. So Batman don't do it for thank yous. Uh, he do it because that's Batman shit. Um, he runs into this one girl um, who who's been looking for him since the day she got like mugged and shit um and assaulted sexually Holy and shit. she t Whoa. and she tells him like uh like i thought i was gonna die because i work with all these criminals and shit but i was actually gonna die coming home from like a theater and shit and that was some fucked up shit but you saved my life don't let these criminals like these super villains like deter you because you seem to be a little bit obsessed with them Whereas every other criminal that you read, ran into, the petty ones, the little crooks, the thieves, or, or what have you, the ones out in the street, like every time you stop them, they're done. They have a 2% chance of recommitting crime when you intervene. Every, but any other time when people intervene, it's like 50, maybe 30 is the lowest, but they usually go back to the same life. Not, not the um, supervillains, because she says the supervillains are clearly insane. Like, that's why they're in Arkham Asylum, because they think that they can break you. They think they can do whatever they want, and they think that there's a way around this shit. They can't accept that they lost. The other villain or other criminals, they do. Like, this one guy, Batman, scared into running to the police station by himself and turning himself in and shit. So she's like, don't, don't get caught up basically echoing Gordon. And then when she says thank you, he's already gone again. Final thing I really, uh, the final thing that kind of happens is Alfred is a real ass nigga. Cause he's like, I fucking hate Batman, but I respect your mission and that you choose to do this. Even though I always have to save you, even though I always have to dress up your wounds that shows the whole history and shit, I mm. fucking hate Batman. But don't you dare say that your mission was moot. Don't you dare say none of this shit matters cause that invalidates not only you, but me and everything we've done together and leave <laughs> Batman on that shit. And Batman is like, mm. yeah, if we want to call it G, if you want to call that G shit, yo, if you're a loser, what does that say about me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a loser. Don't you say those things about hey, yourself? Hey. <laughs> you're a Wayne. You pick yourself up, Bruce. Hey. So yeah, he like, hey, it's not your fault. Hey, don't it's do this, man. It's not your fault. Not now, man. It's not your fault. It's not your fault, man. Hey, man. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, it ends on that kind of note where, hey, 
uh, all points bulletin. We have 20 escaped criminals. We need help. And Batman just puts on his cow and goes back to work. And that's the end of the book. Nice. Nice. Well, I have a book. What? That's, oh, oh book. wait. I have a question for Chris. Now mm-hmm. it's over. Mm-hmm. What is your opinion on the ending of the book? Because I know before on the last book, you were like, I don't know how this is going to close. I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> Well, yeah, if you could uh, rate it between one and ten. 10 yeah, because it like sounded like it best. was already done by the time the book. Started. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess the ending I would give it maybe a seven or six or something like that because like the way that it was in the last issue was like how is Batman gonna get out of all this like fear poisoning and shit and that's when he injected himself with two needles that turned out to be adrenaline and that dissipates the shit. I don't really know how it dissipated the shit, but he had his bearings somehow. So, did Injustice versus He Man end on a stronger note? Yes. Okay, we'll have to talk about that then. <laughs> <laughs> My next book is Man Without Fear, number two. So, as people know, or you don't know, Daredevil died recently, quote unquote. He got hit by a truck, and then basically um, all the injuries and stuff that he's been like repressing, his body's been repressing. Basically, mm-hmm. it just opened the floodgates, so his body, like, shattered. Oh. Damn. Like, from oh. to but he woke Damn. up in issue number one, and now he's basically just been uh, fighting his fear this whole time. This is a weekly series, too. I think it's, like, five issues. There's, like, mm-hmm. the embodiment of his fear is what's in, like, the yellow suit or whatever. <laughs> it's all, like, mutated and, like, like a fucking skeleton, and it's, like, the internal monologue from karen because for some reason dead karen's a big thing now <laughs> like cause that was also a marvel nights but i had to drop off that because uh, i can't afford all these books but fucking um so he's in the bed mm-hmm. his uh girlfriend who was with him in san francisco before he came back at the beginning of charles soul's run um was there and she left and like fucking uh foggy sh- oh no foggy doesn't show up Blind spot shows up. Hmm. His uh his old partner that got his eyes gouged gouged out and Jeez. then got new eyes. Right, his new eyes are all black with like blue pupils. So obviously those ain't good. He got them from the no. Hand. Um, he got them from the hand, but we solved all that. Either way, his partner's <laughs> here and he's like, man. So when are you gonna be Daredevil again? Like how long you think he uh gonna be out for? And like Matt's being a drama bitch, like, he's being a drama queen about it. He's like, "Well, you, I can't walk, blind spot. I can't walk. You should quit while you're ahead too. I should have fucking quit a long time ago, but I'm not oh, gonna quit geez. now." And like blind spot's like, "Uh, yeah." <laughs> so, <laughs> I was thinking about being Daredevil. You can't be Daredevil. Yeah, but it might be a little bit weird. You should just give up on all of this. And, like blind spot's like, "Okay, I'm I'm gonna go, Matt." Like I'm, <laughs> and then like Foggy comes, he's like, oh, I don't remember what this girl's name is. I'll say fucking uh, Rebecca. <laughs> he's like, oh my God, was that Rebecca? And, oh man, all my prayers are being answered. You stop being Daredevil. Rebecca's back in town. You're gonna get oh, Rebecca. Oh jeez, great. And that's like, hey, yeah, great. <laughs> it's like, like every night he's oh, sitting okay. in his bed, like in pain and agony. Because, uh, well, his body's like broken and shit like yeah. that. And it just hurts. And so he's like, pain is, pain is there for us to overcome. Pain is there for us to overcome. And all he's thinking about is like, I can't wait till I can smell Electra's like perfume and blood and everything. Because I want to see her. Like, I want to see her so bad. And like the fear thing comes back. He's like, you'll never see her. I mean, if you did, what would she think of you? You're a broken man. She's a predator. What do they do with wounded like animals? <laughs> they probably just kill you who you are. It like Matt's Jeez. like no. It like falls out the bed. And he, like, <laughs> crawls, he crawls back into like the fucking seat, and he's at like five o'clock shadow in the morning. He's like crying, and fucking Rebecca comes back, and she leaves crying. So obviously he called it off with her. <laughs> Jeez. And, and he's like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> And like Karen Page is like monologuing and stuff like that. Like he always has to be like if he could hear me, he's the man who can hear everything. And if he could just hear me, he'd hear me say it's okay. And uh, yeah, he's just crying out the window. Jeez. So obviously, like I thought, Blind Spot's gonna is become Daredevil. No, it's it's um... sunny outside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a nice day. Like it, like if it, I'm sure if like another person was looking out of another window, they'd be smiling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this is his life, so he's not. 
Yeah. Be <laughs> drop off at issue number one, but I like it. I really like it. This is cool. I'm gonna keep reading it. All right. Sounds cool and everything. Like just like how does the fallen hero return and shit? Yeah. Sounds like a good art. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then uh, we'll get Chip Zdarsky's uh, Daredevil after this, and I know it's gotta be Blind Spot because it, at the end of this issue, it shows you a bunch of like covers that are to come. And, like the mm-hmm. third one is like a bunch of cops like got like the Daredevil at bullet point. Daredevil's on the ground. I'm like, oh, amateur mistakes. Amateur <laughs> mistakes. <laughs> He's a blind spot. Easy connections. <laughs> Easy connections. <laughs> but, uh, oh, you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, that was uh, Man Without Fear number two. So that was going to be all. But uh, Chris had this book, Injustice versus Masters of the Universe. Uh, at the end of number five, uh, just uh, Skeletor has Shazam powers. He Man has. Uh, no, 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 no. All right. So at the end of number five, um, he beats Darkseid. Who's he? And shit. Uh, Superman. Like, because Darkseid has, like, all this power, like, yet yeah, and everything. I forgot. It's. It's essentially like the Infinity Gauntlet. Okay, so he essentially has powered up at this point. At at the end of number five, Skeletor is powered up. Superman is still the same. Uh, Adam is not powered up. He's weak, and Darkseid is powered up. Okay. Hmm. So what happens at the end of number five is Superman stops Darkseid or Darkseid and defeats him and everything, and takes the power for himself, and then shoves his fist or his hand rather through Skeletor and kills him. So then it's just Whoa. Superman with like the Shazam shit or whatever that he Skeletor had. Skeletor shit. He he took his shit and then he has like no, that no, infinity gauntlet thing. So. Him so much. Oh, you don't think I know that? <laughs> <laughs> so Skeletor was growing on me though. Like he was. He was so dope in the run. Um, but anyway, so like it picks up with um in number six. Where Superman is like tr- is playing Adam, and he's like, "Hey, just take me to this point in time, or explain to me where everything went wrong. Because if everything went wrong at this part, I can go back and stop it, and everything will be good. I don't have to be this person because you're right or whatever." So He Man takes him to the like the time and place where everything starts going to shit, and Superman's like, "Ha! I tricked you, you fool!" And then he turns into like a like a dictator and shit and makes shit even worse and starts like like uh beating on he-man and he-man goes into like this blackout coma type of shit and he's uh at the rock of eternity or whatever where fucking shazam things there like the original wizard and he was like yo you can be a hero all it takes is one little word so then adam becomes shazam goes shazam and then fucking blows superman oh, away and starts no beating power. the shit bro he started beating oh. the shit out of superman and everything so um superman's losing and everything uh the whole battle on eternia is starting to like subside and go down uh shazam he man rectifies all shit and brings peace in like it's like a battle of the heads and everything. It all culminates to a point where Superman can't overcome the magic. And since He-Man was already beast mode, and then you got this like fucking Shazam shit, he just OPs over Superman. Superman doesn't kill over, but he reforms, so to speak. So everything goes back I to do, normal I high. Do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically. I, I, uncle, I was wrong. I, said I was wrong. Uncle. I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. Fucking uncle. Diana. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Woman and Batman, like, pretty much, like, uh, bring Superman back to, like, his status quo and shit. So, He-Man, he's doing the right thing. And He-Man foregoes his powers of Shazam, like, kind of gives it back. It was just, like, a momentary thing. And He-Man goes back to his world. The DC Universe go back to their world. And they just, that's the end of it. So, I liked it in, like, the... Just that moment where he becomes Shazam because Superman was scared. That nigga got shook. Like the fear and everything. Like, oh, damn. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Well, yeah. Only magic can hurt him. So, I mean, if you give him the hands with, like, magic. Like, well, what do you get? It Like a sword? Or do you just get lightning powers? He got, like, basically lightning powers did and a new costume. Did he hit him with Shazam? 
Yeah, he hit him with the Shazam. He called Shazam while Superman had him and everything. He was like, Shazam! So Superman, like, gets all fucked up. <laughs> Shazam, <punk. laughs> Superman gets all fucked up and everything. And then he starts, like, throwing the hands and, like, beating them down. And the magic just overpowers him, so. That's dope. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, it was. I didn't see it coming. Because when he said that. That was, the, that was, when he that was on the top of the year. Bro, when he said, like, uh, all it takes is one little word, my mouth. <gasps> <laughs> and I, like, just slide up <laughs> one panel. <laughs> so damn. I was like, oh. <laughs> 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 I love Guide of You. Guide of You is the best because, like, you get spoiled by a whole page, but it's just yeah. like, oh. and then it zooms all the way out. You're like, oh, oh, <laughs> shit. But yeah, dope. Yeah, that's yeah, why the definitely, first time definitely I a good six issue really thing. I would recommend everybody pick up, like, the yeah, Masters of the Universe and Injustice. All Check right, that shit yeah, out. So. Yeah, so that's the show, everybody. That's our show. That's the week. Um, we will be back next week with all new comics. Of course, like above, you can follow us on lo- at Long Story Short Show. Sorry, I got caught in that and spoken. Long Story Short Show on YouTube, or you can follow us here at S Squad Up. Uh, me, uh, fall prey to G O D J J I O D I. We have Lil underscore Philarican. Um, what we like to do is play a lot of Naruto, play a lot of Monster Hunter, and maybe some other games if you guys like to recommend them. And we like to talk about comics. We've got a couple of shows that we are hopefully um, putting out that you guys will enjoy. Uh, that will be on Long Story Short Show, but a lot of the original recordings will be here on Twitch. So if you like that, please follow and uh, just let us know what you guys think. You. See, later. See ya. Peace. Nice. Shazam! Man, Key Man and Shazam gear. That was pretty cool. It was like all like white, yellow, and red and shit. It was like, I think red accent, but it was still pretty badass.